Sitting on a park bench. <laughs> Let's learn about the DAC and the album that made me up my analog game. For any of you that have come back from previous seven videos or so, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. If you could all hit the like button, I'd really appreciate that. It's free. It helps get this channel out to those others who haven't seen it before. And if you could hit that subscribe button, I'd really appreciate that too. It's free as well. If later on down the road you don't want to keep a subscription, by all means, feel free to unsubscribe. Thank you very much. Now back to our program. So yeah, the DAC and album that made me, forced me to up my phono stage game. What do you say? We're talking digital, we're talking analog here. Well, we're gonna talk a little bit of both, but for, the, for, the, for the, this video's purposes, I just, I need to set this thing up. This thing was so good, my DAC was so good, and this album was so good that I immediately had to change my analog stage because it just wasn't sufficient. When you got a DAC and a high res file that's sounding better than pretty much anything else you're putting on vinyl, good problem to have. Tells you how good your DAC is. And that's what we'll talk about here today. About a year ago, I had ordered a um, Denifrips Aries 2 DAC from, I think, Vinshine Audio. Overseas had it uh, had it shipped over. I think I got it in about a week later or so While I was waiting for that I had gone online to HD tracks and ordered a couple different high-res files one of which was going to be the um, Was the uh, Jethro Tull Aqualung in this case? It was a Stephen Wilson remix more on that in a few minutes but I put it on once the once the DAC arrived. I connected it up, and this was I think the one of the first or second ones I put on and listened to it. I got to tell you, I shit myself. <laughs> I absolutely shit myself hearing this. It was the best thing that I had heard from all my music collection at the time. Like I said, it made it it forced me to step up my analog side, where I had to go out and replace an existing. Um, phono preamp made me replace this. I had uh, at the time, I had a Fosse Audio Box X4 tube moving magnet phono preamp. Okay, I spent about I don't know 60 70 bucks on this thing through Amazon. It has your power and on button volume, rather, I should say power and on, same thing, right? It has your power and volume button right here and it has the uh, the bass and treble so you had some tone controls which was good on the other side you've got uh you got a 12 volt uh, wall wart that comes with this line in and you had your output and multi moving magnet inputs right here um all in all you know it's okay it was okay it's certainly better than the uh than the existing phono preamp that i have in the audio technica turntable this thing was superior to that. However, this thing was not superior whatsoever when it came to soundstage and imaging and holographic uh, nature of the music. Couldn't hold a candle to the Denifrips Aries 2. So we'll put this down. It becomes more of a decoration these days. And eventually I went and, uh, and upgraded that to a Project 2 Box S2 uh, phono preamp, which is Eons and eons better. In fact, everything's in its right place. It actually sounds a little bit better than the, than the Denifrips amp or the Denifrips um, DAC, which, if you're a vinyl guy, yeah, that's what I prefer. So a little bit about Aqualung, okay? Aqualung was Jethro Tull's fourth studio album. 
It was originally re released on March 19th, 1971 by, by uh, Chrysalis Records. I haven't heard that in a long time. Chrysalis Records, I do remember that, that, um, that label. Uh, it, was de it is Jethro Tull's best-selling album of all time. It's uh, sold over more than 7 million copies worldwide. Now, for this one, Stephen Wilson, I got the Stephen Wilson remix. And who the heck is Stephen Wilson? All right, so a little bit of background on Stephen Wilson. Uh, Stephen Wilson is a, uh, he's an English musician, founder, guitarist, and lead vocalist, and songwriter of a rock band called Porcupine Tree. I may have to check him out. Plus, he also has about seven albums, solo albums out on his own. He's been nominated for six Grammy Awards. He's been nominated six times for the Grammys. How should I phrase that? He's a six-time Grammy nomination. He's been nominated to the Grammys six times. <laughs> um, in addition to Jethro Tull, he's, he's, he's uh, remixed a couple of his a couple of their albums. He's also remixed uh, King Crimson, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Yes, most of Yes's catalog, if I'm not mistaken. Ecstasy, Gentle Giant, and Caravan. So, Stephen Wilson is in the remix game, and uh, boy, am I glad that I got this particular album remixed. So like I said, I put this thing on and I absolutely crapped myself. What a difference from the original album. I had owned it on vinyl many, many years ago. And in this case, right after hearing the high res file, I noticed that I did have a ripped CD version of it and that I forgot that I owned. And I started comparing them back and forth and it wasn't even close. It wasn't even close. Uh, you know, it was a rip CD, it was the old master, the old mix, and it just sounded, you know, Aqualung was a good album, but it, it just sounded, wasn't exciting, um, sonically, right? Uh, obviously, lyrically and vocally, everything I really enjoy about Aqualung, but uh, you, you can't compare it to this remix. Now, this remix was done in 24-bit, uh, 96K. I, evidently, there were a lot of problems with the original analog tapes at the time. There was tape stretching, and go do some research there, but essentially the best version of this now is a digital version, so that's why I own it on a high-res file as opposed to getting it on a new, uh, new vinyl record, okay? Like I said earlier, Stephen Wilson had done this in 2011 for the 40th anniversary of Aqualung, and the 24-bit 96K version was released uh, in 2015, and that's the copy that I have from HD Tracks. Talk about pricing and all of that a little bit later, okay? Um, so let's let's just get onto the tracks real quick. We'll just talk about some of the standouts on this thing. Aqualung. As soon as, like I said, as soon as I put it on, you knew immediately this was different. Uh, first of all, soundstage much bigger and wider. That's to be expected. So immediately listening to the first track. The title track, Aqualung, uh, you immediately notice that everything is more complex, more layered. Soundstage is definitely bigger. Um, again, it, this sounded like a vinyl experience coming out of my DAC. The Denifreps DAC uh, supposedly is known for its vinyl characteristics, we'll say, and it has, n has not disappointed one bit. I haven't even thought about upgrading my DAC in, in the last year. I think I'm going to be okay with this one for a while. Yeah, so we go into, into Cross-Eyed Mar Mary, which became a much more powerful song. At the 120 mark, the bass just fills the room. And again, this was early days of, of, of my new hi-fi journey about a year ago. Sitting here for the first time, jaw dropping to the floor, going, what the hell have I been missing all these years? And... Uh, yeah, this, this album, which was, again, a very good album, after Stephen Wilson's remix, it has become an audiophile album, in my estimation, right? That means soundstage with depth. It's got um, it's the, the imaging, all the instruments are locked into place. It is an exquisite piece of music to listen to. Just so much fun. Going into song number three, Cheap Day Return. It's warm, it's precise, great tonality on this. Mid, it's a mid-range speaker's dreams, right? If you like that old vinyl sound, you know, from the 70s and 80s, and the systems that you were listening to it on, you know, 
the term warm comes to mind. And especially through this deck, this, this Aries, two, Aries two deck, it does have those qualities. It's not sterile. It's not antiseptic. It's, it's warm. It sounds like vinyl. And maybe that was one of the reasons that really drew me to it and made me so uh, appreciative of the purchase that I had made and really appreciative of the um, of all the reviews that I saw. Check out uh, Randy over at Cheap Audio Man. He, he he was one of the review one of the reviewers at the time that really made me want to get this DAC. Uh, the excitement that you saw off of his face at the time, and I believe it changed his game and what he thought hi-fi was within, at least from a soundstage perspective. So I'll attach the link to that review below. He did, he'll do a far better job than I ever will on, on reviewing the, the actual piece of equipment. But uh, yeah, check it out. Outstanding. The fourth song on the album, Mother Goose. Yeah, I got goose pimples, shocker. Uh, this takes you to a different place. You know, we, you know the song Mother Goose if you're a fan of Jethro Tull, if you're a fan of this album, you know it. In this case, it was just so smooth. The acoustic guitar on this was um, very articulate and just smooth, buttery smooth. And then at the 223 mark, the electric comes in very tastefully, but it's got a growl to it. And it jumps out at you on this, on this recording. It jumps out at you on the Stephen um, Wilson remix, where before, no, nothing jumped out at you. It was a very bland, flattened, very little depth in my estimation, um, or my, opin my opinion rather, very little depth coming out of the RIP CD as well as from what I can remember from the vinyl record years and years ago. So for the fifth song on the album, Wondering Aloud, I think I said that right, for me it's one of the Jethro Tull's top songs, and in this case, the, the DAC and Stephen Wilson's remix really presented the, the acoustic guitar in such a very realistic way. Uh, Ian Anderson plays, I believe, a nylon string acoustic on this, and it is just buttery smooth. A real pleasure to listen to. A um, couple other things about this. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's detailed, it's very articulate. The guitar is sitting right here in your room and Ian's playing. It's a very peaceful uh, soundscape to this. The piano comes in at the 49 second mark and it gave me chills. And again, what Stephen Wilson really did on this is he's layering one instrument upon the other. And with that remix and a creation of more virtual depth in the, in the sound stage, in the imaging, yeah, it gave me goosebumps. Um, very, very cool. And then shortly thereafter at the 58 second mark, the strings come in again, just layered. And what a wonderful song. Um, I put down here, effing awesome. Just a great, great song. So we come out of that and we go into the sixth song, which is Up To Me, called Up To Me. If you're familiar with the song, the laughing, like it sounds like a couple of guys leaving a bar, going into a bar, starts on the left channel, raises up to the center image and comes down on the right channel. Really, really good. I mean, it's like, you know, the difference between the, the standard album, let's try to throw a weird metaphor at you. It's like going on a Ferris wheel, right? And now with the Steven Wilson remix, it's like you are on a virtual reality ride at Disney or something. It is, it's not even the same planetary system as, as the original mix. This thing is, is, is awesome. A couple of other things to point out in this song is, I love the, uh, the lead guitar on this thing. It's poignant, it's nasty, it's got an edge to it. Visceral, it, it's, it sounds outstanding, especially when it's layered on top of the acoustic and the strings and the piano. It's just a, it's a, it's a driving song. You get that nasty face on you while you're listening to this song. Really good stuff. Uh, one of the most enjoyable songs on the album for me for, from, a listening pers from a listening experience perspective. You also have this, I don't know what the instrument's called, but the, the 112 mark, it's like a rattle um, or a clapper or something. Anyway, it, you, it's, this shows just how holographic it is. Uh, it took me by surprise the first time I listened to it. And you close your eyes and you can hear it coming high up in the sound stage on the left, uh, on the left speaker. And then it, 
It goes in the middle and does it again, and then it goes on the right. It does that a couple different times throughout the song. It first starts at the 112 mark. And you could hear it on the, on the previous mix, but it was just part of the song. In this case, it jumps out at you. It's all by itself. Again, very holographic and really, really cool. So as we go from um, Up To Me, we go to the seventh song called My God. It's got the most space and air in the soundstage for this particular album. Uh, it's, it's fairly quiet when it starts, but you can feel the space in the room. It's just big. It uh, feels like you're right there. Um, at the 55 second mark, the piano comes in and yeah, it gives you, uh, gives you chills. Uh, which you do find in this song is the dynamic range is really pal palatable. Um, the soft spots are soft, the, the, the loud sections got more punch to them, more crack. And really something that jumped out at me is uh, in the fourth verse, right after he says, and don't call on him to serve, bang, the drums come in and the lead guitar comes in and it wakes you up. Um, again, this is a very soft song right up into that point, and then at the 207 mark, bang! That's what we're all in this for, right? Uh, dynamic, range, dynamic range was excellent. Really well done on this song. Going from 7 to 8 song, Hymn 43, yeah, my toes started tapping. It's, uh, you can't help it, it's a dr got driving rhythm. The piano rings like a bell is what I wrote down here through the entire mix. Uh, great vocals I, I put here as well. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a toe tapper, for sure. A really, really enjoyable uh, song to listen to. And that goes into Slipstream. It's a one minute and 12 seconds of Sonic Bliss is what I wrote down here. Not a forgettable song by any stretch. Only one minute and 12 seconds. Uh, not one of the first choices I have on the album, but boy, was it fun to listen to on this, on this version. Really fun to listen to. That was the ninth song. Then we go into one of the songs you've heard on the radio countless times, Locomotive Breath. It's huge, it's wide, the soundstage is from wall to wall in my room. It's probably about 20 feet wide, the soundstage here. And the other thing I wrote here is uh, the drums were really prevalent as it pertained to having its own unique space within the image, right? Uh, all the drums were spread out. It sounds like they had, you know, 10 mics on every individual drum. Really well portrayed here. Stephen Wilson did a great job on, on this particular mix. Wind Up is the last song on this album. Great way to end a, an album in my estimation. The six minute song, I think it's the longest, I think it's the longest song on the album, if I'm not mistaken. And Ian Anderson and the rest of the band take you on a roller coaster of a ride. I love his vocals on this album. I love the lyrics on, or rather I love the, well I love his vocals on the entire album. In particular this song though. I love the lyrics on this song. You get to hear a little bit of humor in the songwriting. And again, back to it's a roller coaster ride. So it starts off pretty, pretty, pretty soft and on the slower side. And then at the 203 mark, you're right at the top of that roller coaster and it starts to head down. The drums kick in, the electric guitars kick in. It tosses and turns you for, for quite some time. And then as um, you know, the rhythm is, it's a driving rhythm. It's very precise. Yeah, and again, at the 418 mark, Ian and the band brings you in for a nice soft landing for the remainder of the song. It's a joy to listen to, that's for sure. This whole album was a joy to listen to. Again, going back to where we were at the beginning of the video, this album, the Stephen Wilson remix of Aqualung and my Denifreps Aries 2 DAC completely made me change out my analog stage and reinvest into that because it was so good. It was so good that it was sounding better than my best vinyl records on my turntable at the time. That's how good this, uh, this album is now that Steven Wilson has remixed it. So I recommend it wholeheartedly. It turned a very good album, an album that's been ranked in, you know, Rolling Stone's top 500 albums of all time. It's ranked in the top 10 of uh, prog rock albums. It's on a lot of lists. It turned a very good album into a flipping sonic masterpiece. What fun to listen to this. I listened to this again last night and was just blown away. In fact, I, I put my notes down and just listened to it straight through, straight through just for my own enjoyment that I went back and, and wrote some notes on it after that. But 
Man, what an album. For a Gen Xer, I came through this album probably in the mid 80s. I remember picking it up at the mall, probably at Leechmere. I've been listening to it ever since. You know, there's a couple other tall albums that I'll listen to from time to time, but this one's definitely in the rotation of, you know, the top 50 albums that I listen to every now and again. So do yourself a favor. Yeah, go out to HD Tracks and pick it up. Uh, this thing was only 18 bucks and change. What do I have here? Yeah, there'll be a picture. I, I, I'll put a picture on here. It was $18 and change. So worth it, uh, in my estimation. Just so worth it. So that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Again, for those of you who are returning, thank you very much. I appreciate it. For those that found this video for the first time, awesome. Even better. If you can hit that like button and hit the subscribe button, you really help me out. It'll hit that YouTube algorithm and, and get this out to a few more people. So, so as, I, as I always like to say at these videos, uh, at the end of these videos rather, take the time for yourself, man. Um, life is short and there's only so many hours in the day and if you're a Gen Xer like me, you've got kids that you're trying to set up for success in this world. And if you're fortunate enough, you've got parents that are still around but they're, they're entering a different stage of their life. So we got a lot on our plates, boys and girls. So take some time for you, because if not now, when are you gonna do it, right? Sit down, listen to an album, grab your favorite beverage, and uh, give yourself 45 minutes of some, some peaceful tranquility or some toe tapping fun, whatever the mood strikes you. But put on the music that you've loved all your life, and now on a modestly built uh, two-channel hi-fi system, you don't have to spend a lot of money, go out there and listen to your music like you're listening to it for the first time again. It is an awesome feeling and it's quite addictive. With that, have a great rest of your day and I hope to see you on the next video. Take care everybody. Thank you. Bye.